making a farmhouse merry and bright Christmas sign um, or I guess just holiday season sign in general uh, you can also I'll also show you how to make it from a sign into an ornament so you can make it smaller and do that as well okay so we're gonna start off here we have our uh, illustrator canvas open um, we're gonna start here it says rectangle tool but we're gonna move it to ellipse tool because uh, I want it to be round so shift click make a circle okay if you don't shift click it'll just make an ellipse of a different uh, different proportions but I would like it to be a circle so that's what we're going to do now right here this is where you see your fill and your stroke reminder that in the glowforge a fill engraves a stroke cuts or scores so we're gonna just start by making our um, our shiplap background you can't have farmhouse without shiplap right so I want this to be a round cut out so I need to come up here and change this from white to no fill so you're looking for that red slash right so no fill um, I always use black to indicate uh, a cut line for my files uh, you can use whatever colors make sense to you so we, uh, we have our black circle here and that's just gonna cut just as it is now we don't want it to cut just as it is we want it to cut and then have a shiplap backing so we'll want to come up here to view show grid and we also probably want to come up to view snap to grid and that makes sure that your uh, lines or anything that you're moving is going to be right on these grid lines I'm zooming in a bit so we can uh, make things a little more careful um, and the first thing I actually want to do is come over to properties so select my circle come to properties and make sure that this is a uh, four inch by four inch um, size that's a good ornament size and then again later we'll we'll make it bigger for uh, for a big sign okay so four inch by four inch uh, make sure that this little chain link is linked and that will preserve your proportions otherwise you'll have to do four inch here and then type in four inch manually again no big deal but just something to pay attention to now we see that our sign our circle is not quite on this thick line so we want to just use the arrow key uh oh first we want to get out of this there we go click off of that and now we want to just nudge it upwards okay so we know that this is at uh basically we know that that we have four inches exactly and we can use these guidelines to help us figure out where to place our shiplap lines okay so we're going to come up to ellipse tool click and hold go to line segment tool I always use this green color right here for my scores but you can do whatever you want we're gonna score lines every half inch um, so that we can make sure that they're evenly spaced and so half inch is four of these little squares these tiny squares okay this big square is a square inch all right so you can if you want just start here you know what we're actually we're gonna start half an inch out so one two three four and then you want to come over to this you're gonna want it to intersect we may need to turn off our snap to grid but let's just see if it will do it appropriately without that let's just click off of that so click just our regular select tool yep okay so what we need to do here we're gonna I'm just gonna delete it come up view turn off snap to grid because what we actually want it to snap to is uh, the edge of the circle all right so count down one two three four come across and where it says path that means it's going to intersect with the path of that circle which is really what we want here okay um, and you don't have to get exactly spot on as long as that little pink path um, pops up and you may need to come up to view and make sure your smart guides are on as well okay so that's our first little ship lap line our next one's gonna be right here. I'm making sure it's on that thick um, one inch line here. Okay, go across. I'm gonna zoom out a little so we don't have, it's not so intense. Okay, um, come down another four, do another one. Making sure that it's completely flat. Uh, you see this little zero degrees over there? Make sure it says zero degrees and not 358 degrees or something else okay so just all little lovely things that illustrator has for us to make sure that we stay on track okay over here too just keep going every half inch making sure you're staying on those grid lines okay. 
like Norma Pug snoring in the background. She does that a lot. Okay. One, two, three, four. Sometimes as it gets a little toward the bottom, it can be a little trickier. But you're doing okay. All right, and then you might want to zoom in and just make sure that these are overlapping, and they are. That's beautiful, that's exactly what we want. So now what we'll have is a circle that's cut out and score lines going across it for the ship lap. Now when you make this bigger and use it for a whole big sign, so a 10, almost 10 inch sign, um, you can defocus the laser a little bit when you do the scores. Uh, and so what you'll do on that part is, uh, when you're setting the score in the Glowforge, you'll just add a quarter inch to whatever your material's height is, okay? Um, and I can show you that in the interface in another, another video if you're interested in that. Okay, so right now we have this, I, th I think it's four inches, let, let me remind myself, yes, a four inch, um, we have a four inch shiplap backing. Okay, we're gonna move over. I have a whole thing of ornament blanks that I made already, but, since I want you to be able to see this from start to finish, we're gonna make them all over again here. Okay, so you can just click, copy, paste, okay, so that we have another four inch thing. Um, you actually may wanna just, for ease, come over here and select just your score lines. You don't wanna have um, your circle selected and object group. And that way your ship lap is just all its own group. And I think I may have gotten the circle in with that too. But anyway, you don't have to do that. Okay, so we have this circle here. We're actually going to fill it. All right, it's not gonna stay like that, but just so we have it. And then you're gonna copy paste it again, but you're gonna click to preserve proportions and make it smaller, okay? Alternatively, you can just come over to properties and make it smaller here. Um, again, make sure that these are linked. Let's go three and a half and see what we think about that size. Okay, um, it may be helpful for you to change it to another co color just so you can see the difference. These are not overlapping enough, so we wanna select both of those, click and drag, object align horizontal align center, object align or vertical align center. Now it's centered, and if you're comfortable with this thickness as a frame for your farmhouse ornament and slash sign, then beautiful. Uh, and if you're not comfortable with that thickness, then make this inner circle smaller or larger, and then center it again. Okay, now that we have this, you're going to select, let's move it off, select both of these, move it over just a second, so it's, or just a minute, I don't know why I'm using time units, just a little, uh, so it's off of that. Come to your Pathfinder, and you're going to, on a Mac it says option click. If you're on a PC, it might say something else, but just look up where it says, you know, minus front, option click. Okay, so I'm gonna option click. All right, now I have just a, uh, it minus the front, it subtracted the front from the back. So we just have this outer shape here. Click expand. And now you have a circle. Okay, you're gonna basically use the same strategy to get the little ornament hanger part. And in fact, I'm actually gonna save myself some effort, copy paste, make this much tinier by shift dragging. Okay, shift, click, drag until it's tiny. All right, you can repeat the process but make it a little thicker if you'd like because that is actually super, it's too small it's, uh, to be useful, it's too thin, it'll break off. So let's just do it from scratch. Ellipse tool, let's go, uh-oh, I didn't shift, did I? Okay, shift, and that's gonna make us a circle. Okay, let's see if that's gonna be something you like. Yeah, that looks like a good, a good size. Let's zoom into it so we can uh, see things better. Copy it, paste it, move that other one off, change it to red just so you can see it better. You're going to resize it, so shift, click, drag, okay, and then pop, put it here. That looks pretty good, but not great. I'm going to make it a little smaller, okay, and then you can just use your align tools, object align horizontal align center, object align vertical align center. Then you can option click minus front, and now you have this little circle here. Zoom back out, 
pop this. I like it to kind of cut in half, but if you want it bigger, that's fine. I like it to, to, to end up looking like this, okay? So then click and drag, select both, Pathfinder, oops, sorry, you gotta expand first, then Pathfinder, Unite, and now you have an ornament shape, okay? So again, leave that off if you don't want the ornament hanger or the sign hanger, um, but otherwise that's a good thing to have. Now we're gonna use everyone's favorite farmhouse font, Medina Clean, okay? Um, I always recommend that you purchase right from the uh, maker's website. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description here. Um, but you want clean because otherwise it's all textured and, and doesn't work quite right. So we're going to type Mary. We're going to go to the select tool. We're going to shift drag. If you don't shift, it will mess up your proportions and we don't want that. And we're going to just kind of place it roughly where we think we'll want it. It doesn't have to be perfect. We can resize and readjust as we go. Okay, so I want it to be pretty big. Mary, I'm gonna do a separate text box for my ampersand here, just because I like to be able to nudge things up um, and play, uh, just, I like to have more control. And actually, I don't love the look of that ampersand, but here we are. Okay, so you can do Mary and Bright. Okay, so there's and, and in fact, I'm gonna make it a slight bit just a tiny bit bigger so it's got more overlap on the M and on the edge here. It's important that your design, if you're doing an ornament and you don't hate yourself, you want it to all overlap so it cuts out as one piece. So you're not sitting there gluing eight million little things, okay? Um, so just make it easy on yourself. And then right and we'll make this big. Oh, oh. I clicked it when it was like this little rotation arrow instead of the resize arrow. So be careful on that. Mary and bright. All right. And you might be thinking, uh oh, what are we going to do with that eye dot? Well, I've got a couple options for you, so don't stress about it yet. So Mary and hmm, you can just play around, see what you like. Actually, hmm, we might want to um, rotate it a little bit. So what you want to do is just come out to these edges and Instead of having the resize arrows, you want the, the one where it looks like this, and then you can just mess around until you like the um, until you like the angle. You may not like the angle too. That's fine. Let's see. I don't know. This is looking super awkward, isn't it? Sometimes it just takes a while to make it look like something not terrible. This is still looking terrible because we have all this overlap right here. Okay. <laughs> Let's just think about what we can do. Maybe we want to nudge this down a little and come up here to Mary and make sure that it rotates a little as well. That might work. Let's see. We'll move it up. So we have Mary and bright. Maybe I should have picked a different phrase to use. <laughs> Sometimes things just don't cooperate with you. So again, just play around with this until you're happy with what it looks like. Ooh, always remember to shift click when you're resizing. I almost just messed up my whole life here. And then I'm actually getting getting to okay with this. So now that we don't have so much going on in, the, in that little area right there, it's still not what I would call perfect. But you do you. So whatever makes your designer heart happy. Okay. I'll move it over a little. There we go. And I actually I'm going to make this ampersand a bit smaller and nudge it up a little. There we go. It doesn't have to connect to the outside if it is connecting to these inside ones, right? Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. That doesn't look too bad. Now, you see this giant tail of the T up here. You have some crop options. You can't do really clipping masks on a Glowforge easily, um, but I'm just gonna tell you what I do as a sort of a cheater easy method. I'm gonna select my outer part here, Command C, delete, yeah, Command C to, to copy it, or you can go up to Edit Copy, okay? Uh, before I go any further, so 
select all of my text here, um, right click, create outlines. The important part here, okay, let's zoom in so you can see the struggle. All of these are gonna end up as different cut lines if you don't come uh, unite your letters, all right? So in the Pathfinders panel, unite, and now it's all one piece, and that's lovely. Okay, zoom back out, not that far. We wanna be able to see. And then what I do is I come over to the eraser, and I just, you can use your little bracket keys on your keyboard to make those bigger and smaller. And I don't actually remember how much we had that we needed to cut off, but I'm gonna do this. Just drag it over the part you wanna erase. And now what I want you to do is edit, paste in place, and it'll put it right back where it was before. Okay, and it looks like we cut out just enough and that's beautiful. Now, you're not done yet. You have a couple other things to do. Uh, the first thing that you wanna do is figure out how you want to deal with your I dot. Now, what I typically do is come over to the layers panel. All of it's on one layer, so click this little arrow. You can see that the blue dot shows us what we have selected. I just have this, the text selected right now. There's another arrow, okay? And here, you have your I dot, okay? This little blob. You want to push that, that right over here, this blue dot, so that it's just selecting the I dot. And then I just merge it down. I just nudge it down until it looks kind of okay. All right. You may even want to, let's do that again, select right there, and then zoom into it. Um, and if you zoom super far in, it gives you a little more control over where things go. Or you can, you know, click it and drag it, and that gives you a little more, more control. So you want it to still look like an eye dot and not a weird blob. Um, but you want it to also be connected so it's all one piece. Zoom back out. I think I'm happy with that. And so now what I want to do is make sure it's all selected. Make sure my iDot and the rest of the text is selected. Come to Pathfinder and unite it. That's what I do. You can also just cut it out and make sure that you remember to find it and glue it on. That's fine. Or if you really felt like it, you could overlap these two and just engrave the iDot into the backing of the shiplap that's up to you as well. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna nudge it right like that. Okay, now you want to take all of this, so select all of that, and you see how we have the, the text slicing into the other part, okay? Uh, into the, the, the round. You wanna come on up, click Unite. Now it's all one piece. All right, remember, on the Glowforge, if you have an, a fill like we do now, it will engrave that. That's not what we want, right? So you make sure to come on over here and swap the fill and stroke, and now it will cut that merry and bright bit out. So what you'll do at this point is it can cut. I mean, you're basically done. So what I, I typically do is I paint a board. Uh, I do at least a 4x4 four four square of white paint and a four by four square, a little bit bigger than that, of black paint. Um, and then let it dry really carefully, mask it, and then cut it out. And you can glue these together and it will turn out beautifully, okay? You wanna leave it like this, of course, okay? Or wherever your, your black splotch is, make sure that this is lined up there in the Glowforge user interface, wherever your white splotch is, same thing, okay? Um, if you want to, let me give you a little trick here. If you want to resize this and make it a larger retanger sign, I recommend that you select all and resize it all at the same time so that you know it'll always fit. Okay. There you go. And then if you don't want it to have the ornament part, just don't do that little, the little hanger um, in the previous section. All right. Then you want to make sure that you are file, save as, save as an SVG, okay, and I will say Mary and Bright. And you're all set. Let me know if you have any questions.